talks, true talks. What's hidden out of sight, I bring into the light. Right down to the bone where the truth stands alone. Tell it like it is, if it's her words or his. Speak the truth, leave the rest. Cause this is the place where there's no BS. True talks, true talks. True talks, true talks. Welcome back to the show. My name is Jasmine. This is True Talks. And I am talking to Ray Robson. He, let's see, I researched him on Google and they are calling him the master of production. In this half of the show, I want to have a little fun. He has done, oh my goodness, let's see, how, how many films do you think you've done all together? You uh, have like 26 credits. No, no. So, <laughs> no. so yeah. what I would like to do is just a little game. I'd like to ask a question or uh, a sentence. And in this is a line from one of his pieces. Let's see if he can guess. How well does he know his own work? All right, stay with us. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. My heart was pounding out of my chest. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Wow. I, I thought this was going to be so easy. <laughs> I just... This is from a little clip, and it's called Cold Cereal. We're going to show that clip. I hope you do enjoy it. It's a very controversial yeah. piece. So whenever my director is ready, I am. I think I flipped that on her, so thank you. I remember the first time. My heart was pounding out of my chest. Then I pulled the trigger. My ears were ringing, but my mind... My mind could only think about the kill. It was a three-point buck. I examined the body. No signs of life, just a vacant stare. My heartbeat began to slow and I was enveloped by the silence. Then there was a feeling of remorse. I felt sad about what I had done, yet invigorated. I wanted more. Truly an emotional roller coaster, and I was addicted to the thrill. I knew I had to do it again. And I did. Time and time again. I remember the first time. My heart was pounding out of my chest. 
Then I pulled the trigger. My ears were ringing, but my mind. My mind can only think of the kill. She was a 15 year old blonde. I examined the body. No signs of life, just a vacant stare. My heartbeat began to slow, and I was enveloped by silence. Then, a feeling of remorse. I felt sad about what I had done, yet invigorated. I wanted more. Truly an emotional roller coaster. And I was addicted to the thrill. I knew I had to do this again. And I did. Time and time again. My goodness, when I saw this clip, I watched it three times. The reason I did, there was so much to it and I knew I missed something as far as living what those men were feeling, but they were different. Mm -hmm. It was, first I thought they were both the same in the forest doing the hunting and then I realized at the end what had happened. So I had to go back and I wanted to live them separately. Why did you choose this piece? Well, um you know, I, I don't know exactly where the, the concept originated. It was certainly mine, but it is a little bit of you, you, you best to create what you know or everything you write is, is really based on what you know. And, and uh, uh, as I mentioned before, I, I lived in Montana for a while. I went to mm -hmm. college there. Um, but I haven't gone hunting for a long time, but and even moving to this area, you know, when you, you live in Montana, that's a lot of what everyone does. Um, so I have gone through that experience of, of deer hunting several times, and I know what that feels like, mm -hmm. and I know there's a, definitely a thrill of the hunt that you go through, and the kill, and that there's also, uh, uh, for me anyway, this sort of uh, heartbreaking moment afterward where you kind of go, oh, I killed something. Um, but, but so I had all those feelings in, in, in you know, kind of tying that into human beings and serial killers, where does that come from? And is that based a little bit on some of our, our you know, where people are emotionally as far as what drives them? Uh, and, and just wondering if there's a connection there. And not that I want to accuse everyone that hunts yeah. of also being on the verge of being a serial killer, well, but, but just to, I guess, kind of think a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, people and yes. what drives them uh, to do what they do mm -hmm. um, to, to certain, certain extreme levels. Yeah. Um, you know, because I, I guess I do see that there are probably similarities in, in uh, the desire to go deer hunting and what the people that a serial killer might mm -hmm. have going on in their head. So, but it, like yes. I said, it's not, uh, and I don't like making things which, which, mm -hmm. which, which sort of want to explain anything. You know, it's like, I don't have the answers. Right. I just want to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And, and, and to, to say, mm -hmm. think about this, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, so I just thought it was, it was kind of interesting, especially the way, you know, it, it balances the, the same dialogue is mm -hmm. used by both yes. men. And it, it matches exactly until right at the end there. Yeah. Um, so... Anyway, I don't know if that's I, close to what you yes. thought. It, it is, it's definitely yes. one of those ones where, where uh, you know, I know you were going to ask me about it, but I go, well, I, I wonder what the viewer gets out of it because mm -hmm. it is, it, it's definitely very heady and it's like it'll communicate in whatever way it will to every individual. Yes. How they perceive um, it. And, and, yes. and you know, for that reason, mm -hmm. I'm really yeah. happy with that. Yeah. All right, let's do another one. <clears throat> All right. Oh. 
One game, winner takes all. Oh, that's definitely sixes and the one-eyed king. Yeah. Am I right? No. No. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, that's okay. Try again. One game. Winner takes all. Oh, that's from Rose and the Devil. Yes, yes it is. that's right. Okay. All right. Yeah. If we would, please, let's uh, share this next clip, a piece uh -huh. about Rose and the Devil. Hey, no miners in here. They're with us. Mom? I guess you just wait in the car. I need you here with me, dear. Don't worry. This will be over very soon. Your birthday is still a week away. That's why I'm here today. I want to discuss our agreement. Ah. Per the terms of the agreement and uh, your signature here, the party of the first part agreed to secure for you beauty, fame, and fortune. The party in the second part, yourself, agreed to joint custody during the child-rearing phase and delivery of her soul upon reaching the age of majority. What's going on? We, my dad. <laughs> no way. Hush, dear. Do you disagree that my employer has met the obligations? We can review the accounts. That's not in dispute. I'd like to make a better deal. No renegotiations. No second chances. I saw your last movie. Amuse me. One game, winner takes all. A game? If I win, you release my daughter from your obligation. And if I lose, you get both my children. What? Seriously, at least I'm related to him. Stuart's father lives in New Jersey. What do you say? Double or <laughs> nothing. <laughs> if you agree to play the game, it will void the original contract. You will have to complete the game in order to secure a new deal. No, no Mom, you can't do this. Annabelle, take your brother in the other room, will you? So is your father really the devil? Hey, I didn't pick him. Is he really awful? He'll guarantee you a place in the family business. William is my half-brother, just like you. So you're the son of the devil? My mother was a politician. I don't wanna go to hell. Mm. Huh. Oh, he's kind of high-strung. His father's a musician. I love torturing musicians. <laughs> oh, he didn't inherit any of the talent. Even better. Nice play. I didn't expect that. You continue to surprise me. I like that. Do you? You are looking good. Well, you still have that roguish glint that I've always found so attractive. Is this truly important to you? It is. Am I really that bad of a father figure? Am I? I continue to give financial support. And I spend quality time with the children. Through all my years with fame and fortune, well, I've never found someone so special to share it with. Maybe we could work out some other deal. <laughs> oh. Time to go, kids.
this was a lot more fun to watch, and I watched it a couple of times. My question again, what created this piece? How was this formed? This was the second one of the 24-hour film race that we did. So this was uh, made from concept to completion in 24 hours. Okay. Um, but essentially, we had done one the year before, but every year there's a competition based out of Atlanta called the 24-hour film race. And you, you enter that, and at, at uh, 7 p.m. our time on, on the designated day every year, uh, they send you a, a theme, action that must occur, and a prop that must appear in the film. Um, and you have 24 hours from that moment <laughs> to be uploading the finished film. So this whole thing was done in 24 hours. Um, and uh, essentially, oh, I'm now I'm going to forget exactly who was there. Um, it was me and Aaron Gilpin and uh, was it Kathy? No, Patricia Snyder, because Patricia Snyder did most of the writing on that. We gathered together at Starbucks uh, by the Barnes and Noble in Medford, waited <laughs> for that email, mm -hmm. and then we just sat there and started to brainstorm and started working on the script. Um, I'd already lined up the cast and the location. Um, and it was the talent club, as, as mm -hmm. you may have recognized, which is close to where the editor lives. Ross Williams is the editor of this project. No, and we had okay. discovered the previous year that, because we shot Clear Out in Shady Cove, that mm -hmm. to get the footage back to the editor <laughs> was time. too time consuming. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, we need to find a location close to the editor so that we can, we, you know, we can get something done and then get in whatever footage and we continue shooting. So we, we would do it that way. And so that's why I looked for a location close to the editor. And then uh, he was working on that, and of course he did a, a great job. And it's, it was, it's, it, you know, those things are, are really fun learning experiences mm -hmm. to do something like that. And uh, uh, you know, this year we're going to do it again, mm -hmm. and we're trying to, to do it even better because to me one of the things, one of the problems with with that is you start brainstorming an idea, and it can get so complicated <laughs> so quickly. It's like, well, how do you bring it back? How do you really tell the story? Um, and, and with this concept, we had a lot of things going, but it's like, okay, how do we make it all, mm -hmm. how do we wrap it all up? Um, That's your we're, expertise. Right, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this year, you know, we're going to do it again, but hopefully we can, we, I think it's a lot of, remember, we got to do this in 24 hours, let's mm -hmm. not get too complicated with the story, and now we just got to go with a very simple mm -hmm. one, two, three plot and, and wrap this up. Um, but so uh, uh, anyway, you bring the people together, and and because no one was paid on this one, this was totally a, a gratis production, both cast and crew, um, and uh, just amazing the the community around here, how they're willing to help on projects like this, mm -hmm. um, just for fun, the experience, and and for all of us, it's a great experience, and we end up with a a nice humorous okay. little piece out of it, and it's a chance to work with with some new new people that I've never worked with before. Uh, a couple of the actors that I've known for a while, and this is the first opportunity. And then there's others like uh, Tamara Barris that I've worked with on a number of projects, and, and always good to call her up and bring her in. And uh, uh, you know, there's always a, a group of, of people you work with, and then new people you bring in. And mm -hmm. I, I try to make a, a, a balance there because if you have a good core crew, uh, then adding new people and getting to know new people. Uh, is very smooth, mm -hmm. um, and uh, like I said, there's just uh, some incredible help out there, mm -hmm. both in front of and behind the camera. We're lucky to be in Ashland, especially yeah. for exactly that. Yeah. It's with building and growing here. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready yeah. for some more? Sure. All right. <clears throat> I don't give a gnat's but I'm hungry. <laughs> okay, that that's vampire camp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was and so I think I'm, I can remember that one because. Was that in the trailer? It may have been in the trailer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was. Okay, it wasn't yes. So I've mm -hmm. seen that more yeah. often than, than the whole film all the way through. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's yeah. a cute one. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> and that was Tamara that de delivered that, that was line. Her? Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's, I didn't recognize she's the her with zombie. the teeth. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. With all, yeah. Okay, I yeah. didn't recognize her with the makeup yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, my. Because so, she had these yeah. huge teeth. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. All right. <clears throat> Ye shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Oh, Six is the One-Eyed King. Yes. Yeah. Now, with yeah. this particular uh, little mm -hmm. film, it won the most awards. Mm -hmm. Where did this idea come from? How did this um, spawn? You know, and there's been a lot of reference to that being similar to a Twilight Zone episode, and, and I would say it was. It was basically a response to uh, the flourishing reality TV mm -hmm. uh, shows that, that, that came about, I guess maybe at the time I started doing that. 
um, you know, they, they were catching on and being very popular. And so that was taking that idea of reality show to an extreme level uh, where, where people are, are, are willing to, to, you know, be the survivor, the last survivor in yeah. this competition, but they also risk dying. Mm -hmm. um, but it's that idea that you, you, if you find contestants that are so desperate, yeah. they would be willing to risk mm -hmm. dying over wealth. And it, it kind of challenges the idea of, of the value of money in that whole This reminded whole me a lot of the series Saw. Which I've not seen Saw. No, there's Never like six it, yeah. or seven. Uh -huh. or s it's, oh yeah. my God, it's yeah. the same kind of concept. It really worked within one to two yeah. people in the first couple shows, mm -hmm. the series. Then after that, it started getting to four or five. And yeah. oh my, it, it reminded me yeah. very similar of that series. Yeah. I think yeah. we may have come out before Ooh, they did. So, no, I, I have yep. heard people say that before, that yeah. they saw th th mm -hmm. there was a similarity there yes. um, in that. But uh, we had gotten shot before the first one came out, I'm pretty sure. But not that it, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you sort of recycle a lot of ideas oh, and yeah. put your own, your own uh, mm -hmm. uh, perspective on it and change it up a little bit. But yeah. uh, uh, so yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's similar to that. And there's been, it's been compared to a few other films as well. Uh, with that same basic idea, um, but it was uh, it was a way of doing of something feature length, and again it goes to the low budget side of things, uh, because very limited locations. Um, we basically got a warehouse in in uh, Medford, and that's where we shot. Really, most of it was shot there. Uh, so to be able to do things and, and figure out how to do things on a low budget, um, mm -hmm. but you know the different things you can do. Like uh, there was in in that we needed a. a a camera uh, that was going to be mounted on a wall and was going to rotate because that's how they were recording the contestants. Right. Um, and in order to do that, because I didn't have that, <laughs> is I essentially uh, had a device that would rotate and I, I painted a, a bottle black and put a, a lens on the front of it and I set it on the ground, actually on the, the garage floor at my house, and I got a shot of it and you know it rotated around and then mm -hmm. I turned the video upside down so it looks like it's on the ceiling oh, pointing down goodness. and so that's that was a shot on that nice um, and uh, just it is fun doing different effects and, and the gunshot effect like like the one that we, we just saw in uh, cold cereal uh, I, I do a similar type of effect in uh, sixes and the one-eyed king which it's amazing with just three frames of video <laughs> uh, film or video anyway if you just three change Changes, you know, you can make that look like pow, you mm -hmm. know, and and I've had people ask me, how did you get that guy, his head to blow off? And I said, I never did. You don't actually see that, but but those three frames that I just kind of put the, the brightness of a gunshot and then cut away, people think they saw him shoot his head off. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's, it's fun to kind of play mm -hmm. with that. So. All right, let's do another one. Oops, they like to be called blacks now. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's from Dear Future Self. Okay. Yeah, All yeah, right. which was, uh, um, you know, we talked about that in the mm -hmm. last show, I guess it was, yeah. and uh, uh, mm -hmm. one that's that I, I wrote and very proud of. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was it's kind of interesting having a concept, and you have to pull it together uh, in the Rogue Valley, you know, right. uh, and without much money, um, and we didn't have much money on that, though we were able to pay. Uh, you know, scale, indie scale for, for the talent and, and pay the crew some on that. But uh, the, the script called for a, an older black male. Mm -hmm. So here we, here we are living in, we're looking for, you know, in the Rogue <laughs> Valley. So uh, yeah. fortunately we found JP who is retired from the Shakespeare mm -hmm. Festival. And so I was asking around, and they said, well, there's JP. And then but we discovered mm -hmm. he moved up to, to Sheridan, Oregon. And so uh, went out there and met with, with, uh, with, with JP and his wife. And mm -hmm. uh, he was willing to do it. And uh, so he mm -hmm. came down here and spent one night, and we got the, the little bit with him. And so uh, uh, you know, some, of the, some parts of production can be a little bit challenging to accomplish, but uh, it seems like it always works out. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. And real quickly, I want to go through a couple, a uh, couple more. Um, we talked about bringing the hibachi into the den. Yeah. I love that line. Yeah, that's well. Marlon Mason wrote that line. Mm -hmm. It is uh, 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 from the bag, and I think that actually may not be something she wrote. I think 
you'd have to check with her. There might be something she actually overheard her parents say. That's what she yes. said. She yeah. clarified that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, yeah. yeah. She, she can't take credit for writing yes. that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> she can take credit yeah. for overhearing <laughs> that. Uh, yes. But yeah, she was sort of documenting what was going on with her. Mm -hmm. her parents at the time and yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things That's that a, actually happened. A very controversial yeah. piece but a very yeah. important piece to yeah. be heard. If you get a chance uh -huh. please watch it. Uh -huh. It's called The Bag. You can find that on YouTube. Now going back to you Ray. Mm -hmm. Here's a wonderful magnificent gentleman. Your career, your work, mm -hmm. uh, you're tangible. Mm -hmm. you're, you're very comfortable to be with. In your career, in your life that's coming forward, what's coming in the future? What scares you the most about any dreams that you may have? Ah, uh, scares me the most. Oh, yeah. um, you know, I, I, I probably complacency, and I guess I'll share with you something that, that some of my recent thoughts and being totally out, out there is. You know, I, I've worked on production manager uh, on a few films, and there are certain people I work with that that's that's fun to, to work with, but you know, I do love to direct, and I I, I hate to to get distracted in other directions even though I enjoy those directions and being drawn away from from some of the things I truly want to do and I think you always have to pull back to that focus and go okay no that's that's fun I'm enjoying it but that's not really exactly what I want to do yeah. and uh, you know I think that first moment came many years ago when I kind of went well, I, I really don't want to be making TV commercials that's not why I went to film school and that led me down the path of what I've been doing lately. So uh, I think I'm afraid of, of just getting a little bit too distracted from where I really want to go. But uh, I think for the most part, things are going well. I have uh, several projects coming up, and, and uh, you know, one of them is, is to continue working as a production manager on a project. But mm -hmm. a couple of other projects, that one that I've written and going to direct, that's very exciting for me. I don't mm -hmm. know if we have time to talk about we that. We have just a, a few bit. minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, or Try a few seconds. Okay. We need to wrap it up. Go um, ahead. Anyway, well, it mm -hmm. looks like this this late September I'll get an opportunity to work with a, 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 an actor, a Japanese actor that oh, I met yes. a, year, a little over a year ago yeah. um, that has been in three Akira Kurosawa films. Mm -hmm. And I happened to run across him in a sushi uh, restaurant in, in Japan. We Ooh. connected up, and now he's going to be coming here mm -hmm. to do a short film with uh, Marlon Mason uh, that wonderful. I've written. I'm and you have a new that. movie out, Besetment. I don't mean to cut it short. I've appreciated your time. Okay. If you want to watch any of his films or his shorts, please just go to YouTube or Vimeo under Ray Nomoto, N-O-M-O-T-O mm -hmm. Robson, R-O-B-I-S-O-N. They're all there to be viewed and to have fun. Enjoy them, and please stay with us. This is True Talks with Jasmine. I'm sending you love always.